Hi guys. Okay, for anybody who has been watching me or following me for a long time, y'all should have been expecting this video because I have done this several times. And right now this is really important. So let's start with the video that I recently did about the virus versus the militia and then the videos that I did about my childhood. Now, all of those, the information that were in those videos is absolutely the truth, without a doubt. And the, uh, there's way more involved, especially in the childhood videos, but that's not really the point. The point here was for you to listen to those videos, and I want you to be just really brutally honest with yourself. No one is going to ask you to answer the question at all. Um, so you can use this response as a way of judging where you are judging, pardon the pun there, judging where you are vibrationally in this game that is moving really, really quickly. So when it came to the virus versus the militia um, video, what was your gut reaction, your instant gut reaction? And then what was your reaction as the video continued? Were you angry? Were you scared? Or did you just really not care at all? And it needs you to really be honest about this. If you were angry, upset, concerned, or any of those things, then you were more than likely bouncing down to the upper layers of the third dimension because that was meant to give you information to see if you would be triggered into anger, hatred, um, annoyance, or anything along there, okay? The next one that had to do with my childhood, which I did hand you guys quite a bit more than I've ever done before, uh, is still as a drop of the bucket of what the truth was in my life, let alone my childhood, but it was meant to touch a little bit deeper. So what was your response there? Were you sad? Were you angry? Were you concerned? Were you confused? Were you any of those things? If you were, then you were caught classically in the vibration of fourth dimension, which is judgment. Okay. Nothing is wrong with any of these responses, guys. There's, it's, there's no attack here. It's simply a way for you to be able to gauge where you are along this route that we're taking. Because over and over and over again, I've told you guys that we're all creator gods and we know what we're doing. Always. End of story. That's just the way it is. There is no reason to be upset about anything that anyone else is doing under no matter what the circumstances, all right? So just because, of course, just because that this is the case does not mean that I personally do not have things that I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis based on that uh, past that I have created for myself. But it is still a game, and I do know what I'm doing. There's a reason for it. So I've also put this in other videos, and I'll go through it again. Originally, the plan was, uh, because I've never been here before, and Guy is my friend, the plan was, we did have a plan, that I was coming in with a lot of other star seeds, and I was actually going to be born in England, uh, with this group and we were going to do a lot of work on the vibration of the planet but we were going to do it together as a group now during that period of time um, the geckos who are very good at what they're doing the moment that you go from now time as a god especially with no experience and you drop into linear time space I don't know uh, how to explain this, but just think of it like you're going from one perspective into another one really, really fast, but there is this split second, so to speak, as you drop into linear time space that kind of was um, kind of a dead space as we did that. 
and the geckos are really, really, really smart, and they knew that the star seeds were dropping into this planet, and they wanted to keep the planet running the way it has been running. They didn't, they truly, in their amnesia, truly believed that they could keep it on the vibration that they wanted to, which was fear, because that's the vibration that they feed on. They wanted to keep it in the fear vibration, so they have, at every turn, tried to stop the planet altering that and raising that vibration up to her next level. Like I said, they're in partial amnesia too. They've got a lot more awareness than, say, humans do, but they still are in heavy amnesia. So what they figured out is they saw these energy beings coming onto the planet, and they said, oh, oh, oh we got to do something about this. We, we can't be having that. Well, they can't stop a consciousness from being born. But what they did figure out is that they could switch us into a different fetus. They could switch us out. So very quickly, they switched me into a very dysfunctional household and knew with my vibration that I'd never been here before. So they dropped me into a very, very dysfunctional family. The instant that happened, my whole self, my, as you would probably say, higher self, reassessed the situation collapsing time and space and looked at it and said, well, Okay, we're not over there in England with this group to do the job this way in linear time space. What can we do with where we are? Or should we just leave? Because certainly that is always an option. And at the time, by collapsing time and space and looking at the big picture and all the potentialities and all of the options, basically my higher self said, okay, well, we can't do that job, but we can do this job. So this job became, uh, as a complete newbie on this planet, I was very, un, I wasn't, I didn't have any expertise at all in these low fractal dense frequencies. And basically I agreed to stay in that fetus and get a crash course in these low dense uh, fractal energies so that whenever I got to be at this point, this over the last five years point, that I would have the expertise in those. Well, those low dense fractal energies are associated in the human body with negative things, negative things happening to you. That's how it's translated with your five senses and your belief system. In reality, they're just frequencies. That's all they are. They're frequencies like there are frequencies on your TV that show you a picture. It's a translation of just energy that is translated in bad ways. So I agreed, of course, uh, I didn't consciously agree to it. I didn't know anything about it. I was in amnesia. But my higher self, the, the big picture me, the one that is, is standing up on top of the mountain watching the whole thing, said, okay, well, we can do it this way. And that's what happened. So the first trauma happened when I was about five weeks old, and then it continued on. And like I've told you before, what comes out of me, what comes out of you is what we experience. So after that um, very early trauma, after that fear set in and grew, and I created all the horrible things that happened uh, very, very quickly. And they were um, exp exponential in that because I had never been here before. And I have very focused energy whenever I came in here, very focused energy. Unlike, say, G-Man. G-Man is truly a long-term human. He has been on Earth uh, for millions upon millions upon millions of lifetimes. He has been here. He has been every kind of thing you can be. He's been a bird. He's been rocks. He's been uh, he's been an elemental. He has spent a great portion of his time, however, in the human body. He is an absolute long-term human. Whereas Stephanie's father, Steve, he is what I call a long-term player of the game, which means he is. 
um, he enjoys the duality game, the dualistic game that's here, but he prefers to be out in the fourth dimension rather than on planet Earth. He's gotten, he has done it, he's done it for thousands of lifetimes here, but the majority of his millions upon millions and millions has been in the fourth dimension. And almost always, a good portion of that has been on the gecko side. Okay, so we've got long-term humans, long-term players. I have never been to any of it before, so when my energy came down into a human body, it's not that hard to see one of us come in, and as I've called them before, star seeds, uh, beings that have never played this game before. They have, the geckos have absolute machines that are tuned to a vibrational range, so they are immediately notified when a star seed is um, in in any way on this planet. If a star seed drops in uh, in utero, yeah, uh, as a fetus, very 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 early, or if they pop in at the end of the pregnancy, if they replace somebody in body only, if they walk in or not, these that energy change is does not mean a star seed has bigger and better energy at all it simply means that it's different it's very very different compared to somebody who is a long-term hu uh, human or a long-term player so it triggers they know because of this difference um, personally it would probably read to you kind of like more confusion than anything because it's very confusing here so we tend to show up in conscious form looking around going whoa whoa very very confused uh, because things are so upside down here okay so when I switched over to this other body I agreed to what was going to happen because I would it was a very good way of becoming very very good at understanding those low vibrations so that I could assist in the defractaling of them later on in my life, i.e. the last five to ten years, okay? Now, the way that you know that, that it was time for me to use everything that I had set up was when I died. That was kind of a, okay, here's your memory back. This is what happened. This is why it happened. And now we're going to get to work. And that's exactly what happened. And that's what I've been doing since then. However, on the other side, my human body still has to deal with the trauma that is the, what happened up to and including uh, 12 years ago and beyond. So I use whatever it is that I need to use, and I've used many, many things in order to deal with those issues and keep my body from triggering all the time. And I'll continue to do that until the day I die or make it to 5D, okay? So... That is the reason why. But as you can see from what I've just told you, I am very, very aware of why I was born into where I was born, how that situation had actually been altered from what I had originally intended whenever I came here, and how that's been used effectively in a different way to help my friend Gaia. And it's all very understood. Now, Brenda, who has to deal with the trauma every day, definitely has to deal with the trauma every day. And Naya absolutely understands where the, tri the trauma is coming from and how far uh, Naya can go to help Brenda at any given time and still get the work done. Okay. Now, a lot of your questions about why would you do that. Now, if you are in a vibration that's heading into the 4D and 5D range, whenever you see my videos, both of them, all of them, the answer should be one, extreme curiosity. Curiosity, like, wow, why in the world would you do that? What in the world would possess you to do that? Now, from where I sit right here, I agree with you. What in the world was I thinking? There is no reason to be sad or upset, and I appreciate all of you guys for your love and support from that regard. But I assure you that I am aware of how, what, where, when, why, and how, and all of that stuff. And it's just a moment-to-moment -moment thing that you have to deal with. 
in order to do what I do and to be the most effective assistance and friend to Gaia as possible, it was very, very advantageous for me to be able to reach all of those um, vibratory experiences because it made me very familiar with those frequencies when it came to defractaling. It makes it much easier. And to go that deep and that broadly is very difficult to do in one lifetime, let alone survive it enough that you can get something else accomplished at the end of the day. I appreciate all you guys' love and support, but now we're going to go one step further. If you're looking at this, uh, those videos like it is a game or a movie or a play, then you're just fascinated with the roles and the story behind the game. And that's all you need to be worried about, remember? We're all gods. Nothing could hurt me, truly. Nothing can hurt you. Nobody got forced to do anything against their will, not ultimately. Ultimately, I knew exactly what was going on. I knew what was going to happen when I decided to stay in that fetus. What I didn't understand was the physicality of the pain because I, I'm not a physical being. I do that very, very seldom and never where the physicality that I'm in is painful. I've never done that before. Uh, I would see no point in it. It's just not my gig. So although I knew all of it was going to happen like it did on a vibrational level and all of the options of how it could play out, Unless you're in the physical body experiencing it, uh, all you do is, is like you read. Like you can read, um, he broke his arm and the pain was excruciating. Okay, it's like reading it versus being the guy with the broken arm. You, you can tell the difference between that, right? So I knew what was going to happen. I knew what it looked like. I knew that physically it wasn't going to feel good. I knew all of that. But to experience it here in body and to deal with the consequences of it, was it worth it? Of course it was worth it. Absolutely it was worth it. There is absolute a uh, bunch of assistance that has made things go so much easier for Gaia that I could not have done if I wasn't intimately, physically, familiar with those vibrations, those thick, heavy, intense vibrations. Those things happen always um, in on that level. Otherwise, you can't reach them. Nobody that's in happy, happy, joy, joy, butterfly land um, can see those vibrations, can see those frequencies. We just can't see it from that level. You just, you just, you just can't. It's un, they're unidentifiable. Because of my history in my life, I am very good at discerning those frequencies and following them back and assisting to the defractaling point. Much, much easier. So the question is on those videos that you have for yourself is how did you respond? Did you respond with anger and fear? Did you fall down into the 3D vibrational trap? If you did, you need to be aware that you did that. Um, you need to be aware of it. That means that you're still popping down there. So keep, keep on point, guys. Watch for that. Don't ignore. Don't play like it's not going on. Don't play like it didn't happen. Say, okay, this is still a trigger for me. I could still be triggered into those lower vibrations, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep an eye on this really, really seriously keep an eye on it. The other one, which was much broader, was how did you react to the other videos about my life? And somebody that I know you guys care about me a great deal, right? Okay. How did you respond? Were you disgusted? Were you upset? Were you sad? Were you... Uh, relieved that I was away from all that, whatever. All of those are the vibration of judgment. And if you're looking at that story knowing that I'm a God and it had to have been created and approved by me, had to have been, there's no other way around it, then it just becomes more of a fascination. Like uh, when I look at it, it's like, what in the heck were you thinking? Why would you ever do that? 
to yourself. Why would you create that? Well, I created it for a very good reason, and it worked beautifully. Uh, the job that I'm doing because of that um, has been incredible, and I've worked with a lot of incredible people because of it that I could never have done without it, never. Now, do I pay a heavy price on the physical side of me, the Brenda side of me, my physical consciousness? Yes, of course I do. But is it worth it? Absolutely. I believed that whenever I decided to stay in that fetus, and I believe it to this day, that it is absolutely doable, it was doable, and I can do this. And obviously, I'm still here, so I can now, for another aspect was, if you'll go back a little bit further, there was a video that I did where I told you guys that I got bit by a snake, a water moccasin snake. For those that you don't know, that is a very, very um, dangerous snake. And it was a young snake, and a young snakes that are, are venomous, they don't know how to control the venom. Uh, yet whenever they're young so they tend to just yeah, out of fear they tend to just keep pumping the poison in so they're very very um they can be very deadly and i got bit on my hand which is not the best thing in the world because it is closer to my heart and it was a very dangerous situation and i got very little response to that you know um how you doing? Are you okay? Obviously, you're still alive. Not, not much of that at all from the snake story. Uh, the reason why is because not very many people have ever been bitten by a snake. There's, there's nothing to relate to there. Uh, it was interesting because my ex... Um, husband watches my videos and reads y'all's comments. I, I don't know how long he's been doing this. I think about a year, maybe a little less. But that's a huge difference, by the way, guys. A huge difference that he actually watches my videos. But he noticed, he said, um, he said, weren't these people your friends? Weren't they concerned about your being bit by a snake? And I just had a little talk with him a little bit, and then we moved forward. Now you talk about this other story where I talked about my, well, adult and childhood. And I got quite a bit of response from that. Because there are a lot of people out there who have had similar things happen to them. And it triggers people's remembering of their own trauma or being close to somebody who is traumatized in a, in a similar way. Okay, so it's 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 a trigger for them, for you guys. So if you responded um, with a story, a support system of any kind that tried to support me through these horrible events that had happened in my life, look back into yourself. Think of it like a mirror and find out why you had such a visceral response to those videos and versus the video that I did on being bit by a snake. What is the difference? These videos are put up to assist people in getting to the fifth dimension so that the human vibration on the planet will improve, defractal, and merge with Gaia so that she can fully merge into the fifth dimensional vibrations and leave those lower vibrations completely behind. So these, these videos are made to help you do that. They are not meant to say that if you responded this way or that, you're a, you're a bad person. None of that is true. It couldn't be even further from the truth. It is simply a way of saying, if you want to go from dallas to anchorage and you respond a certain way it's meant to say oops you're heading to la okay and it's just to remind you that this is the way to anchorage that's and you're going the way of la if you want to go to la if you've changed your mind and you want to go to la and still have anchorage that is perfectly perfectly fine what i am here doing with these is 
Everybody, especially star seeds, have all had trauma in their lives. Just like me, you agreed to it because most star seeds have no experience or very, very little experience in the lower fra fractal um, frequencies and vibrations that are dealt with here on this planet from 3D up through the 4D now. And you came to assist Gaia. So you had these traumas, you agreed to these traumas, you created these traumas so that you could have a baseline and expertise and assist with taking them to where you are comfortable. So although you have no experience or very little experience in those lower um, fractal energies, you are very experienced with the higher frequencies where all of those fractals come together in a flowy uniform way so what you did is you got yourself into a position where you have no experience and you kind of threw yourself into the middle of the fire to get the hang of it uh, it's kind of like being up in the air with in an airplane and your pilot dies or passes out and you got to figure it out fast so you depending upon what your job was what you came to do depends upon what kind of and how much trauma you experience you did it just enough to to get a handle on it so that you could take it to the defractal state in your area of expertise okay so when you go back and you can look at these videos again, be very honest with yourself. If you're not honest with yourself, if you just say, no, I didn't do any of that, I absolutely believed, and there were a couple of you, absolutely believed that she's a creator God, everyone around her is a creator God, all of it was done for a reason, and wow, that's a heck of a thing to, to volunteer and a heck of a, of a way to go about it hats off to you for your game but there is no reason to be upset or worried or any of that stuff there's really no reason so you look at how you responded that way you'll be able to see where you are on this game are were, were you easily triggered into anger uh with the military or fear with the military versus versus the virus um video how easy was it for you to drop drop that direction? If it was easy for you to drop that direction, you need to make sure that you keep yourself in a a much softer, uh, less, less confrontational. For goodness sakes, do not watch any uh, videos on anything to do with the virus or what's going on around it. Just don't even put yourself there. Because um, you are... If you did trigger to anger and uh, fear, then that means that you've still got triggers that will get you over there and it's going to throw you off track. If you're trying to go to 5D, you know that that is a weakness. That's just a smart thing to know. So keep yourself and only watching happy, happy, fun things. Keep your mind active with creating fun things. Do not go watch the um, craziness unfold unless you can see it with popcorn and laughter. If you fall into fear and anger, then you should not be watching that movie. And if you want to go to 5D, if you want to go to Anchorage, so to speak, if you've changed your mind and you want to go to LA, you want to stay in that feeling of anger and uh, fear, then exactly the opposite is true. Watch every single thing you can find regarding everybody else's anger and fear. That will absolutely trigger and keep you on a vibration that will take you to an alternate earth that will be living in those vibrations. As I've said oh, again and again and again, there is absolutely nothing wrong with choosing that route. Now, if you're still listening to me, you're probably not going to do that <laughs> because someone who wants to go down that route in fear and um, anger, 
uh, you're not going to remember any of this. You're not going to want to remember any of this. If you're listening to it now, after you click on the end, you won't. Uh, you'll just remember being angry at me, and you're never going to listen to my videos again. That's what you would do. Now, the next one is, as I've told you guys, the 4D is huge, and the vibration of judgment is huge. So, really, I hit you with pretty major, strong emotions to trigger that judgment, no matter what it is. So, if you were triggered into that judgment, it's, and you want to go to 4, 5D, it is just a matter of becoming aware that you still can be triggered by um, childhood molestation or rape or the society falling down of family not not um, helping family. All of these things that were in those videos that could trigger you into judgment were there. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. This thing goes down so much is into uh, judging whether or not you wear uh, a blue dress today or a red dress today. No, again, nothing wrong. This road is the one that's going to go to New York City instead of Anchorage. Nothing in the world's wrong with uh, New York City. I wouldn't probably go there right now, but ultimately, for sake of the analogy here, there's nothing wrong with New York City either. If that is, if that is uh, where you want to go, if you can't possibly believe or understand or even desire to live a life where there is no judgment, no decision making, no choosing one thing over another thing as to being better than. That is judgment, and that is New York City. It is not Anchorage. And I have talked to a lot of people that say, well, you can't live without judgment. You have to have judgment. And they really, really believe that. As long as that is in your mind, you absolutely will not go to 5D where judgment is not there. So how do you get out of judgment if it's in every single moment of every single day that you live? And the way you do it is practice. The way that you do it is understanding what you're doing and trying to see if you can get to a place even for a few moments during each and every day of not judging anything about anything. There's a, hey Stephanie, Look, look up online, and there's a story of a, of a, like, guru-type dude, and he was, he's like the village, I don't know, shaman guru or whatever. I think this is in, like, India or something. It's an old story, and somebody uh, said that he had, I think, raped this woman, and she had a baby. Oh, I remember that. Story. Okay. That's Oh, that's an Eckhart Tolle story. Well, I think it's based on older than that. It's an old, the old wise man. Um, See if you've got a title for it. everything. See if you can get a title for it and I can just tell them okay. that they can Google it. See what you need to Google. Anyway, in that story, Eckhart Tolle story, uh, what he's showing is, yeah, you can sit there and just watch the world go by and not have a judgment on the situation, just simply an observer. First stage in getting to 5D is being able to be that observer, to not judge anything that's going on in or around your life. After you clear it out, after you, you, you sweep all of the, uh, the stuff aside, after you clean the plate, so to speak, Clean it all up. You start with a blank slate. Then you could start creating a new in the fifth dimension where you recreate over and over different all the time. Uh, and you have to be able to create and let it be whisked away. Create, whisk away, create. You cannot be attached to it. And judgment is very much an attachment. Yes? Okay. The story is, is that so? Question mark. And um, it looks like it's on Eckerd Tolle's website or something. AwakenConsciousness.com. Is that so? 
Okay, it's on Eckhart Tolle's website of EckhartTolle.com. Well, no, this says Awaken Consciousness. Oh, AwakenConsciousness.com is his website, and on there is a story or him telling the story. It's written. It's written, and it's called, Is That So? Mm -hmm. Question mark. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> um, now, guys, don't go jump into the extreme here. Remember to pick one thing and hang on to it like it's the end all beat all is not the way to do this process you have to be able to move and groove and hang out and go from thing to thing whatever you're dealing with at any moment which will be very different than everyone else around you me included but that story if you read it you'll understand that not judging thing that you can absolutely live moment to moment day to day without judging an event whatsoever so i'm sitting here am i dealing with on a day-to-day -day basement a basement <laughs> basis um things that have happened to me in my past judgments that i have made absolutely i do but i'm doing it from a whole different perspective at this point and I will continue to do so until, um, like I said, I'm in the fifth dimension or dead, one or the other. Fifth dimension or dead, fifth dimension or dead, fifth dimension or dead. That's my mantra. Okay, so yes, for those of you who expected this video, you are right. It was a test. It's not a pass-fail test. It is simply a way for y'all to understand what is triggering you, where you stand, what you need to watch out for if you're going to Anchorage, or just a heads up that you're not going to Anchorage, all right? Okay, so hopefully that's understood for all of you precious people that were really, really concerned for me was very appreciated. I love you very much. But we need to get back on track on what we're really here for and uh, defract all these energies, go back into oneness. Um, Gaia is not even kidding uh, nowadays. So let's flow with her, shall we? Let's get everything balanced, defractaled, help her get that last few percentages up into... Uh, the fifth dimension that she wants to be in. All right, that's it, guys. Love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll see you later. Bye now.